Oh, boy, this anti-Americanism has gone too far. Now those dumb Germans are spitting at Lance Armstrong. Those Nazis must have amnesia. They may need one of those little reminder cards like the dentist sent you. Hey, Germany, haven't seen you for a while. If you need a cleaning, keep spitting on our national heroes. We'll give you a cleaning. In fact, we'll give you a cleansing. What's up? Well, I can't take it. These countries are really starting to get on my last uh, France, Germany. Did you hear Kofi Annan said this world is not safer now than three years ago and the Bush was wrong? Kofi, this funny bastard is probably from Newark has the nerve to let his son violate sanctions and starve the Iraqis for oil deals. Now they're safer because the UN's not giving their food money to Saddam. I think anybody, anytime anybody talks about this country, we should blow up one of their soccer stadiums, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> and anytime the UN badmouths us, we go right down the block to the UN and wait outside with baseball bats, all right? <laughs> and Lance Armstrong, you're an inspiration to all of us. I've been following you for years. America loves you. I've never actually seen you do your thing because it's too boring to watch a bunch of dumb <laughs> dummies biking. I could go to the park and see it live, you know. <laughs> but still, God bless you for wasting your life in that awful sport. Welcome, fellas. What's going well, on, big fella? What's the matter, Norton? Missing your tea? <laughs> no, I got it right here. I hid your tea. Why'd you hide my tea? Because I thought it'd be funny, a prank on you, when you come out here, look at your tea scrambling around. You like, have a, hair. like a rat. <laughs> what about my head? hair? What? You really do have an awful haircut. <laughs> <laughs> you look like the heat miser, stupid. <laughs> well, Mr. Saturday Night. Shh. Shh. You do look like the heat miser. But it, Shh. Don't try to make that joke. Listen, we don't want to. I don't have to make that joke, Bob. It was silence. They don't know. They're sick and tired of corny cartoon the jokes. Show. When, he was doing doing hack. when he was doing his monologue. They don't like hack heat miser jokes. When, was doing his, when he was doing his monologue, was y'all not going, what the hell is wrong with Colin Zach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, everybody on three, uh, what, <laughs> what's wrong with your f head? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, Hank Colin. What's wrong? Hey, uh, Ricky Lake, try not to get the audience. That's Mr. Saturday Night, awful head. I don't like the fact that we look like two father-son teams. <laughs> That's all right. At least over here, I don't know how to tell you. At least I don't know how to tell you this. You were adopted. <laughs> at, least, at least now we know where to start the show when we make the cut on that line. All right. Let's start the show. How about this? Bill Crosby defended his previous comments. <laughs> Bill Crosby defended his comments about blacks not parenting their kids at a conference with Jesse Jackson's Rainbow Coalition, where he was accused of erring dairy, er, er, airing dirty laundry. Here's Cosby's response. Your dirty laundry is out of school with <laughs> two thirty every day. It's cursing, calling each other a nigger. They think they're hip. They can't read. They can't write. They're laughing and giggling. They're going nowhere. Now, well. Apparently, Cosby forgot that he did Ghost Dad. I think that's the most important thing here. He did what? Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. The movie Ghost Dad. Ghost Dad. Yeah, oh. he's still judging oh. people. Cosby, Cosby called my movie Coonery and Buffoonery. Now, it was probably well-deserved. Well, that, that was the only true statement he <laughs> made, you <laughs> asshole. Yeah. yeah. That Soul Plane was the worst movie ever. I, you know what? You know I what? went to see the movie with him, and the NAACP called me because I went to see it with him. <laughs> I don't like uh, Tiger Look at Lenny, you've never heard of Soul Plane. Jesus, Lenny, why don't you see a black movie once in your life? I saw Southie. I'm still trying to get up. Hey, I, I, don't turn on me. <laughs> the natural advancement for Institute of Colored People, right? You can't say colored people, people flip out. <laughs> then you're a racist. Change the name of the organization. National Association for Colored People, go the other way. I don't it's know. So, he sells jello. What do I give a I mean, I want to agree with him just because it. Yeah. But it's almost like he's, he's, it's like he's not even, like, trying to help black people no more. No, no. no. Why don't you admit, secretly, 99% of black people agree with Bill Cosby, including both of you. No. But he phrased it a little indelicately, and you hate to give white people a moment of joy. No. And that's why you can't say you agree with it. No. Cos that's what it is. No, it's not. Shut your mouth. You don't think co those cultures are adversely affecting most kids? 
that don't have the skills of a rapper or a comedian or national well, talent. Well, I mean, what, who can we blame for terrible white kids? What, how come bad black kids they always... Blame the heavy metal the blame? They don't blame heavy metal they do 1982. So. But they when was the last time somebody blamed heavy metal? When was the last time somebody blamed heavy metal? 1982 is yeah, right. No one blames Shut your mouth, heavy They metal. do blame uh, music and films for, for bad acts. They blame, uh, they blame Beavis and Butthead for people setting things on fire. 1992! They blame Jackass. No, they blame Jackass. I swear, Jim, if you make one more rip, I'm getting closer. If you get closer, <laughs> you're really going to beat your face And the in. problem with Cosby is not that he said incorrect things. But hey, how about Rush? I heard they are really causing some problems for the kids, you <laughs> stupid old man. No, the problem with Cosby is I don't like don't Cosby. Don't point at Cosby because you're pointing at me. You're right. I'm pointing one great comedian to another. I, I don't like the fact <laughs> that he doesn't speak through his act. If he talked like this on stage, I wouldn't mind him as much. But he's kind of annoying because he's all mom and pop and cute on stage. And then he gives his real views off stage. That's but that's his real view. I mean, he's making a statement by saying yeah, that all stage. I know, I, stupid. But what I'm saying is he should I be speaking know to his if, act. Uh, Lenny Bruce here. What you give? You give your real opinions on stage. Partially, yeah. But I don't do. I don't do something that's the polar Jesus opposite. You said partially. You, you gave it to the show. Don't tell him. I talk about up in his grill and tell him. I talk about. I talk about being lonely and liking hookers. That's my whole life. Yes, I do talk about that. That's not the polar opposite, though. No, he's not doing the polar opposite on stage. He's talking about. He's talking about how to raise kids and his family. He's not going opposite. The word nigga is the opposite. Of what he's not saying. doing anything consistent with what he's saying. They're baiting us. They're baiting us. I know. They're baiting us. No, this, this is honestly how I feel. Oh no! Fight uh, uh, I'm uh, out of the business. Wait, yeah, go ahead. No, this, this, this is. This, <laughs> Oh, I'll this, do that N word. That, I'll throw it out there, baby. Listen, this is, Watch me. This is honestly how. Uh, when somebody tell Lenny to calm down, he looks like a lobster. Oh. He just keeps getting red. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Cosby. Cosby. Will somebody I, let Fat Joe's girl speak? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Whoa, what? Yes. Whoa. What is that? Right? They don't even know. Lean they back. They don't know. Lean back. Honestly, this is. This Lean is back. What, anybody, Fat Joe. <laughs> I don't want to say that anymore. Joe, he don't want nobody to let you in. Shut the hell up. We have had capacity. We have had capacity. Do you notice what he's doing? Let him do his joke. Stop the guy Beal just talk. But listen, first of all, <laughs> Jesus, how angry was that? I honestly feel like this. I think Cosby is at a point now, man, where he's bitter because of things that has happened to him in his life. And he's trying to judge other people and other people's kids and the way that they're raising their kids by what he's went through, and I think it's wrong. I think Cosby should keep his mouth shut and continue to live his life and let other people live theirs. He you really have been in California because you just said nothing in 35 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's called, get Cosby that was the most surface. That was a good point. Yep. It wasn't even a point. You're right. Was, right. Was, was that a point? Dumbass. That was a good no. point. It didn't even make sense. No. They he didn't it. say anything. Uh, he said nothing she, except she, vague. Thank you, baby. <laughs> it meant nothing. He said vague, cliche. It wasn't even a... Yeah. Go to L.A. with the yeah. rest of the phonies. Yeah. I think that he... Hey, shut up. You're 14 drinking coffee. You're... you're, you're, you're okay, shut up. Uh, they, they didn't fall for you, right. dumb boy. Shut up. Uh, that's it. We'll be right back. Now we talk about coffee. Yeah. the norm. I don't know why Norm McDonald, why don't you come on this show, Norm? Come on, stop it now. Nonsense. All right, let's talk about both the National Enquirer and the Star have been reporting well-documented claims that Mary-Kate Olsen is in rehab for cocaine addiction, while People in Us magazine is sticking on her family story about the uh, eating disorder. So, the big question is not which is she in for. Nobody gives a damn. But the point is, why do some people cover up certain things if Baby Doll is in for that, you know? Well, you know what? Why? This, this is what I don't understand. Well, Whitney Houston had her problem. Nobody oh, said no! It, nobody said it was an eating disorder. We went straight to the nose candy with Whitney. We should go to the same thing with her. It's the nose candy. Did you say what you Get want? Up! Nobody said it about Whitney. Nobody said it about Whitney Houston. So why should we be saying it about her? She's on a nose candy. I'm the first to say it. If Whitney was, so was she. I love you, Whitney. If you watch <laughs> Get up! Are you, are you Why do you give him some good old-fashioned Boston whitey attack? Well, I tell you what. I, I couldn't do you because I'd kill you. <laughs> Both of you. But you got to start eating. Biscuits, gravy, birthday cake, Forget. anything you nitwit. Do you hear what they're saying about you? They're saying you're Whitney Houston. You can't even sing. You son of a bitch. 
You respond. sons of bitches. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You didn't respond. Respond, respond, oh, respond to what going to respond. Respond to it. I'm going to respond by saying, guess what? You can't just correlate everything like it's a like it's some big conspiracy against you paranoid bastards. Why can't it ended we? In 1965. Why, not? why can't we? We're sick of it. Why? why? You're sick of it. You go, of course, why white people, people are sick of it. Are sick of it. What? Of course, it's directed towards you. Why? Why would you not be sick of it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <When you, laughs> well, answer this question. You didn't answer. Why, why well, you act like you don't talk about white people doing cocaine. Of course, if there's a white celebrity, well, if there's a white people, a, a don't celebrity even address them on this. It's a bad time out. She was, doing, she was doing coke off Full House. Thank you. When she was, when she was a baby. <laughs> Listen, and you think they wouldn't talk about that? No. I don't think no, that's they wouldn't. That's not my point. That's not my point. Why are you trying to reason with these sons of bitches? Because they do family. They do family stuff, man. She can't so be what? a cocaine. So what? The papers don't care about that. Well, what? The papers didn't care when it was Whitney. When it was Whitney, it went straight to the addiction. Well, maybe they showed she... pictures of Whitney arm all uh, scaly. No, Look at that really... woman's calf. It looks just like oh, her get arm. Get a close up of that get nasty a close -up calf. Of her calf. She shoots heroin in a calf. She's a so this junkie. <laughs> what? What did we do? Yeah, exactly. Look at his legs. <laughs> <laughs> He actually has legs. Is like she a junkie? Is all he has legs She's like a junkie, the... though, right? Huh? Who knows? But I'll who say can? one thing. Who knows? Who can? You pussy! Let me tell you something. This dude said Kobe Bryant was a junkie. No one said that. He just made it up. I didn't make it up. We I heard it. You didn't make it up. He heard I heard Kobe a, was a crackhead. Crack That's what he heard. I heard Kobe's a crackhead. I heard. What about who? No, no, no. Who? 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 She's. Who? Robert Downey Jr. He's a drug addict. We all know he's a drug addict. Right. Listen, you give me many white people we don't care about more than Robert Downey Jr. If that was if that was Tate Diggs, he'd be doing 20 years as a political prisoner. What about Val Kilmer? All I'm saying is you're a phony. That was a dumb point. No, it wasn't. Kelly had my point, and he never answered. You notice he's done because it's ludicrous. He didn't even answer it. He's laid on the floor like the chump that he is. People would love to think that she's a drug addict. Nobody calls me a word from my generation when they. That young. <laughs> She's in. Can I just say something too? Uh, this he was a little angry also because a life-size doll of her is bigger than him. He's <laughs> <laughs> smaller than the Olsen twins. You're a, you're a cokehead. All right. Let's talk. You're right. He changed in Hollywood. We thought you were on coke a few months ago. You're acting like a crackhead. <laughs> Thank yes. God. Remember? <laughs> He's to than Mary Kate. Kevin is changing. You've changed a lot. He hasn't changed except that one boring my But listen to this. The protest of war in Iraq, Toronto's Blue Jay Carlos Delgado has refused to come out on the field when God Bless America is playing during the seventh inning stretch. Uh, Last night he was booed at Yankee Stadium and did not return for the rest of the game. Uh, Nobody cares? No. No, no I, one cares. Not that I don't care about the topic, I, but who cares I, that he doesn't want to stand? Let him not stand. I, so what? I, well, I'll tell what you why he didn't stand. No, but that's his right. That's not endangering anybody. That's not endangering anybody. Let him stand for the Iraqi National Anthem. You're going to sit down and have him cross He's not Iraqi. But he's not American, so so He's told me. Iraqi Iraqi what's more American than somebody didn't call us Delgado? Nothing. Who cares? I'm so sick of athletes. Lenny, go ahead. I'm trying to sick of athletes trying to make political views. They should do what they do, which is swing your little He's stick. He's having a sucky year. Let him. He's having a sucky year. The poor guy swam here from Cuba. <laughs> he ended up in Toronto. <laughs> He's pissed. He wanted to play in a major league. Hey, you know what? I feel like, hey, it's, it's an organization. If you're playing for that team, if the whole team gets up, you're part of the team. You get up, too. And if I'm on that team, I would take my bat and give him a good bopping in his head <laughs> if he didn't you. get up. You Thank get up with the team. That's exactly right. Let him make his little point. That, that's his idea of making a little statement and let him do it. He's allowed to do it. Even though I don't like what he's doing, he's allowed to do it. What's not a problem? Who cares? I still feel that if it's your team, I still feel that it's your team, you don't do for yourself, you do for Here, your team. Here's why, and if it's here's team why you feel it, that way. He shouldn't do it. Here's why you feel that way, because when you stand up and sit down, you're the same height. That's why you feel that way. <laughs> Me and Jim. Come on, listen. I'm going to tell you something about that. I'm going to tell you something. Webster. <laughs> listen. Me and Jim are the same height. He's just a little chubby. We're not the same height. Stay next to the poster. Stand next to Lenny so I can remember different strokes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. In today's regular Sound Off segment, we're turning the Act 3 over to Jim Norton. Oh, the inmates are really going to run the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Uh, thanks, Colin. Uh, today, actually, I have a very inspirational story about uh, self-acceptance. 
Uh, this goes out to every, every uh, red-blooded American boy with uh, fat breasts and a few little odd fetishes. <laughs> Jim Norton was born in 1968. He looked like a normal, happy baby. But even as an infant, Jim dreamt of things other babies didn't, like golden showers and dog collars. Jim quickly learned to hide his deviant urges from his Irish parents, who always sat three feet apart. As a teen, Jim tried everything to suppress his perverted desires, combing his hair like a retarded Chinese man, feeding a neighbor's cat, even babysitting. Nothing helped. Eventually, Jim tried his hand at stand-up comedy. For years, he eked out a living on the New Jersey dance floor circuit. Still, desperate for money, he even rented himself out as a pony for children's birthday parties. Then, everything changed when he was invited to appear as a regular on Colin Quinn's show, Tough Crowd. Soon, Jim was hanging out with his new celebrity friends, like convicted rapist Mike Tyson. Ex-drug dealer, Fitty Scent. And First Lady, Laura Bush. With his newfound success, Jim finally found the courage to be his true self. Hey there, it looks like someone's got a girlfriend. Uh-oh, don't look now, everybody, but Ron Jeremy stopped in to say hello. Yes, you've come a long way, Jim Norton. From the six-year-old boy with that give me candy and take me for a ride look to a basic cable phenom with a pension for Brazilian prostitutes. Here's looking at you, Jim Norton, you handsome devil. <laughs> that is, that was beautiful and a man's man. Correct me if I'm wrong, that Brazilian prostitute picture, I thought I saw a throwback jersey on the other side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, 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 I don't want to mention any, any names of any um, six foot four uh, black comedians that were on the other side with their arm around her, but uh, for some reason they cut Patrice out of that photo, but that was a fine picture. Well, you really have led quite a life. What's, the, what's next in store for Jimmy? You going to go the other way now and become like, uh, you know, like a born again or something, you know? No. Well, you should think about it, you know? I'm a disgusting person and but, just, what? you could turn around. I was going to say that, but then you just interrupted me with, now you can turn around, and now I'm kind of like, all right, I guess I will. You're right, I do stink. No, not you stink, we stink. When we put ad-lib, we should have probably worked this out beforehand. We should have. Instead of ad-libbing and bawling horribly in front of the horribly, crowd. Horribly, all of us. And that bombing. was such a funny thing. I'm just hoping that we have enough stuff from the other thing. Maybe we can cut off at the end here. Yeah, maybe. What are you putting the rap sign up for? How about start? You could... <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, folks, Medicare no longer sees obesity as a personal failure, but a medical problem. What personal failure of yours should be redefined as a medical problem, and what would you call your disease? <clears throat> Patrice O'Neill. Uh, oh. <laughs> I said, oh. Oh, so is that why I can't stay faithful? I'm not an asshole, I'm just sick. <laughs> Nothing. So I don't... <laughs> It's a cheating thing. So I don't need to lie to women ever again because I have, I have petitis. <laughs> <laughs> now lies, <laughs> now lies like baby, baby. I wasn't messing around. We were just watching television. It could be replaced now with the truth. Honey, help! I need more medicine. My petitis is acting up. I just <laughs> put it in your sister. <laughs> Please, go walk and get my pills on the locker in the bus station. Please, Harry, before I put again. <laughs> Lenny, my personal failure is the ability, the inability to maintain an erection for four days. I see the commercials and I feel inadequate. Just once, I'd like to call my doctor and ask, why am I cursed with a two-day tragedy? <laughs> Jim. Well, not unlike Patrice, I'd like to uh, say something uh, to my ex-girlfriends uh, that I've had that I've cheated on and mistreated, which is uh, all of them. 
and it wasn't my fault that I had sex with those fat waitresses on the road. I have creepitis. It causes me to do irrational things like forget your birthday, hit on your friends, and think of anyone but you while we're having sex. And uh, if I was healthy, I never would have told you that I was sick on Valentine's Day just so I could take that money that I was saving for your bracelet and buy myself a prostitute. But uh, please don't be mad. It's not my fault. <laughs> Kevin! Well, uh, the one personal problem that I would like to see redefined as a medical problem is sometimes when I see women that I like, I get really excited and aroused. Well, it's not just any woman, it's white women. And because I'm hung like a horse, it's easy for them to see my bulge. But I'm not trying, but I'm tired of them saying, ooh, he's a nasty little man, he's a pervert. No, I want people to accept my disease for what it is, and that's BPE, black penis erectosis. It's uncontrollable. <laughs> It's uncontrollable. There's nothing I can do about it, damn it. <laughs> okay, folks. Wrote, it. Folks, wait. <laughs> Usually I say that's a show and applaud. And tonight I'd like to say, you guys proud of yourselves? Good writing. <laughs> what? That was what you asked us to write on. Shut your mouth. I didn't like it. They asked your medical thing. Four great, hilarious people. Four great, hilarious people. Four d your corny ass so I So what? That's as fast as you can write it in that one day you give us Shut that up. dumb question. You know, I don't bring up those ones. You, uh, a couple questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, over here. You, uh, you seem generally uh, uh, displeased with your comedians right now. No, these guys are all brilliant, but, you know, the act four is all kind of corny. <laughs> um... Potitis was bad? You know it. You're an It wasn't ass. bad, but the way you set it up, nobody even knew what you were saying until it was too late, and you just, you know. What, whose fault is that? Mine, genius, or, or them? They don't know what the f well, they're doing. Well, either way.